Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Steve Apps, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at a UI keyboard accessory view that sits at the top of a keyboard where you can have custom actions such as closing the keyboard, calling a function, and so on. Okay, in order to set up our accessory view and add buttons to it, we need to create a UI text field extension. So we're going to go File, New File going to create a new empty Swift file and we are going to simply name it UI text field. Once we've done that, jump into the file, import UI kit, and we're going to create an extension on UI text field. And we're going to create a new function called function add done button to keyboard. And it's going to take in an action called my action of the type selector, which is an optional. So it doesn't have to be necessarily passed through. Then we're going to do let done toolbar of a type UI toolbar. equals UI toolbar we'll do frame and we'll create the frame so x0 y0 width we're going to do 300 it's all right it's going to take up the whole width of the screen so you don't really need to worry about that and we'll just set the height as 40. then we're going to do done toolbar dot bar style equals UI bar style. I'm going to do it black translucent. Then we're going to create some flex space. So let flex space equals UI bar button item. Do bar button item as dot flexible space, target as nil and action as nil. So this is just to create some padding and have the done button show at the far right hand side and before that the flex space will take up the view then we're going to do there done equals ui bar button item we're going to use this one here so title will be done style is going to be dot done target is going to be the self and finally, select will be my action that we pass through. Now we do their items, which is an array of UI bar button items. It's a new empty array of UI bar button item. And then in items, we're going to first of all append the flex space and then will append the done button so essentially what it's going to look like is we'll have our flex space here and then we'll have our done button so that way the done button is always at the far right hand side just a small done button and our flex space will take up the rest of the view to essentially put that nicely at that right side so then we go done toolbar dot items equals items and finally do done toolbar dot size to fit finally do self dot input accessory view equals done toolbar so now from any ui text field we can call this add done button to keyboard pass in an action and in our case, the done button is going to close down the keyboard. So let's set up a text field in our storyboard in the default view controller. And just in the attributes inspector, we're going to change the input to keyboard type to a number pad and we'll change the keyboard look to dark. Because by default, you can't dismiss the number pad keyboard. It doesn't have a done or close button. So for this tutorial, we'll be adding the done button to close down that number pad keyboard. 
So once we've got that set up, let's connect that up with the assistant editor and we're going to name it pin number as an outlet. All right, back to the view controller, close down that. And finally, in view did load. Just before we do that, we're going to add UI text field delegate to the view controller protocols. So comma UI text field delegate. And in view did load, we're going to do pin number dot delegate equals self. Okay, and finally we're going to do pin number dot add down button to keyboard. And in the my action, we're going to add a selector. And in that selector, we're going to do self dot pin number dot resign first responder. And that's it. So now we'll run our app and I'll show you it in action. Okay, it's hard to see, but if I tap here, we have our text field. We can see we have our number input and our accessory view here. So now I hit the done button and it simply closes that keyboard. So you can add any amount of buttons to this accessory view. Obviously you don't wanna go overboard and position it as you will. And you can also make it call your own custom functions, which I'll show you now. And there's a caveat to that and we need to set it up slightly differently. Otherwise it won't work. So I'll just show you an example. So if we go back to our code, add a new function called say hi, and proceed that function with obgc for objective C. Otherwise you can't call that from a selector and we'll simply print out say hi to the console. So now I'm going to copy this line, add done button, comment out the first one, and from the selector, we are just going to call the say hi function, and that's it. So we would expect when we tap that done button, it's going to call say hi, and it'll print out say hi to the console. So let's check that out now. So if we open up our text view, hit done, you'll notice it actually crashes our app. So what's going on? So if we take a look at the log, we can see here we've got an invalid argument exception, unrecognized selector sent to instance. So that's our hint there. So usually when debugging, you want to check the last few lines before the call stack. And the reason that this happens is actually quite interesting. So you would think the add done button the keyboard, the selector, calls the say hi in this view controller class here. But in reality, what's happening is this selector's calling a say hi function and it's trying to find it in this UI text field class. So it's looking for a say hi function in here. And obviously, it doesn't exist, so the app is like, I don't know what I'm calling, and ends up crashing on you. And the reason that that happens is to do with this line here, and the target. So the target is essentially the target class where this action lies. So target self is going to do this instance of a UI text field, so in that case, it's going to do this pin number one here. And in this instance, we don't have a say hi function in this extension, so it can't find it and crashes. So what we need to do is we need to pass in the view controller target, set to that, and call the action. So let's change this add done button to keyboard now. And we're going to make take in a target of the type any, and the target's going to be optional. So now if we copy this var done button here, paste it, it's coming out the first one, and in target, we're going to unwrap the target value that we pass into it. And just before we run our app, head on over to the view controller, and in our add done button to keyboard, simply add the target as self. So we're passing the instance of this view controller 
to our add done button to keyboard function. So now we're running our app and let's see if this works. Okay, so we tap the done button. You can see in our console, it prints out say hi. Perfect. Now, let's say we want to go back to our original function, which was resign first responder. Let's run that and see if it works. So before we run it, we need to fix that up and add a target as self. At first, we're going to change it to nil after. And in a second, I'll show you why we're going to change it around a bit because there's two scenarios here we need to take into consideration essentially. So now we fixed it so it will print out say hi. If we change it back, tap done. Hey, our app's going to crash again. What's going on? This doesn't make any sense at all. It was stopping the keyboard before and going down, but now we can't even get rid of the keyboard ever since we added that target and changed that function. So let's quickly hop over to a keynote and I'll show you why that's happening. So first of all is the concept of first responder. Everything in iOS by UIKit has this first responder. And essentially when we tap on a text field, it has a chain of items which can respond to the tap event in order of priority. In that chain, the first few items might say, hey, we can't respond to an event, move on to the next item and so on, until one of them pops up their hand and says, hey, I can respond to that tap, let me take an action. So in this example here, the keyboard is the first in the chain. So when we tap on the UI text field, the keyboard is like, hey, I can respond to that event, let me pop up. And now when you call resign first responder, this keyboard here, is going to resign and hide essentially. But that is if the target is this UI text field. If I move on to the next slide, a UI view first responder, it doesn't have a keyboard or anything like that. It's simply a touch. So if we're calling resign first responder on UI view and it's a touch, it's not going to do anything at all. From UI view standpoint, it responds to touches and doesn't show the user a keyboard. Whereas the UI text field does show the user a keyboard. So now because we changed that target in our function, we're passing the target as this UI view and calling resign first responder on it, which to its world, it has no keyboard, so it doesn't get rid of it. So we now need a way for UI text field to be the target when we want to call resign first responder. And also if we have any functions sitting within our UI view land, like say hi, we also need to be able to call it from that target. So we have two targets, the UI text field target and the UI view target. So let's go back to our app. It's quite simple to fix actually. Go to our UI text field and all we need to do is with this done button, comment it out again, we're going to create a new done variable equals UI bar button item. And now if we can do if the target passed in was equal to nil, we're going to set the done to be the original target of self, which is referring to this UI text field target, which can resign a first responder. Otherwise, if we do pass a target into this add done button to keyboard, we'll use that target. So that would be a case you're passing the UI view target, which contains a function called say hi. So now going back to our view controller, let's change our target to nil because when we're res resigning the first responder, we don't have an actual target. We want it to use the self target which will cause the text field to be able to resign its first responder, which is that keyboard. So now when I tap on the text field, hit done, it's gone. How simple is that? 
So there, the two things you need to take into consideration is setting your target correctly, depending on what you want to do, because you might want to resign the first responder and also call a function at the same time, in which case you might pass in a target and also have a way that the resigned first responder might actually be called with directly within the UI text field extension instead of outside in the UI view controller. Completely up to you. But now you know how to use a UI accessory view, actually dismiss the keyboard if you want, and also add your own custom functions onto it. So you can download the source code in the description below. Remember to subscribe, hit that bell button for notifications, and if you like this tutorial, smash that like button. Catch you guys next time.